are Candace Appleby and Danny Ching. And I want to give you guys a, a chance to hear the kind of things that we hear when we're working on products. And, and they have, they're dynamic athletes, they have a ton of insight. And I couldn't think of anyone better to host that kind of discussion than another one of our athletes, Anthony Vela. He's a former Carolina Cup champion, surf race to victory champion, noted surfer, all around good guy. And uh, we hope you enjoy the show. We hope you enjoy our products. And here's Anthony. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks very much, Tyler. And for those of you out there tuning in to FCS Sup Talk here with Candace Appleby and Danny Ching, two of my favorite athletes. So let's start with Danny. Um, Danny, give us a little bit of an intro about what's been going on in your life recently. <laughs> I know there's been some pretty big things that have been happening. So give everyone out there a chance to know what's been happening with Danny these last couple weeks. Uh, last few months, in fact, I've been training really hard to do uh, the Outrigger World Champs, and that was on Sunday. And, uh, How'd that a, go? Had a grueling race. It was uh, five hours of headwind, and I ended up coming from behind and winning by two seconds. So yeah. first place, you are the world champion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then that was uh, the second biggest thing I did over the weekend. Uh, <laughs> on Saturday, the day before, I proposed to my longtime girlfriend Leah, and she accepted. So I'm engaged. <laughs> <laughs> and shout out there to Leah. They've been together for a very long time, and longtime supporter of Danny. And she did quite well in her race this weekend as well. So congrats to Leah. I believe she finished 11th place yeah. um, overall in the women's race. So congratulations, Leah. But now I would like to introduce Candace Appleby, who is the winningest Battle of the Paddle competitor. And Candace has had a lot going on in her life as well recently. So Candace, give us and everyone out there a chance to see what's been going on with you these last few weeks. Well, a few weeks ago, as some of you may know, I had hand surgery. So I have just been working on recovering on that. I got my stitches out yesterday. So we'll see uh, how things come along and looking forward to a, to a good full recovery. Um, other than that, I've been working on, you know, some of the other things that I have to contribute to the stand-up paddle community, and that is uh, the Junior Pro and Youth Sup Fiesta that's going to be happening on May 5th, so um, I'm really excited about that. I've been working really hard with Anthony here, and we're <laughs> going to be putting on, you know, the, the Performance Paddling Junior Pro, and we're going to have a live webcast provided by Sup Connect. Sup Connect. We got... <laughs> Athletes coming from all over the world to complete, compete for their share of $5,000 in cash prizes. Um, we'll have age group sup surfing, sup racing, and a highlighted junior pro sup surfing event. So, I've been working really hard on that. Really excited about that coming up. And I'll be going to the Carolina Cup this coming weekend. I won't be racing, but I'll be doing some clinics with you. Awesome. Carolina Cup coming up this weekend. And thanks again to all those of you who are tuning in to our live webcast. We'll be taking questions that have been pre-submitted. We'll also be taking questions via Twitter. So you can go ahead and send us a tweet at FCSTalk13. That's hashtag FCSTalk13. And we also are going to be taking questions via phone calls. So the shops have been given a private number to go ahead and make calls into our show to ask you guys questions that they have that they don't get a chance to ask you at races because you guys are big, busy focused on winning. So if I'm not mistaken, I believe we have a call that is up and running, ready to roll. So we do have a call ready. Our first call in this first of a kind live webcast FCS Sup Talk with Danny Chang and Candace Appleby. So we're going to take our call right now. In just one moment. This is exciting. Somebody's going to call us and ask us questions from far away. <laughs> oh, hang on. We have a call. Hello, you're on live with FCS Talk with Danny and Candice. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, Anthony. Anthony, we'll be patching her through. We have Kim from Connecticut. Just one second. Kim, are you there? I am. You are live. Go ahead. Hi, Kim. This is Anthony. I am here with Candace and Danny. How are you doing this evening? Kim, are you there? Can you hear me? I am. Good night. How are you? Very good. Thanks. I'm here with Dana, Danny and Candace. Do you have any questions for either of them? We're doing great. 
I'm here with Danny and Candace. Do you have a question for either of them? It seems that we're having a little bit of trouble with our phone connections. So we're sorting out some technical difficulties. Again, this is a first of its kind. So Danny, this was not your first Molokai to Oahu win. This is your second one, if I'm not mistaken. That is correct. In uh, 2010, I was able to, to win the Molokai solo. So, All right. So I, under, I understand you're having technical difficulties. So I'm just going to go ahead and ask my questions. Perfect, Kim. And, uh, awesome. We can hear you we now. So We can hear you now. We'll carry on. So the question is, we have um, a couple of girls here that have started a junior elite race group and uh, what we'd like to hear from you is what tips or advice can you give them on preparing their paddlers for their first race? So great question. They're starting a kids group and I couldn't think of two paddlers that are involved with kids more than Danny and Candace so maybe Danny go first. They're starting a kids group and you're looking for some tips on how to get the kids going and paddling if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> uh, the hardest part with the kids and training is to try and make it fun. Uh, fortunate enough, stand up paddling is so much fun, that's usually the draw. A uh, couple of tricks I use is you got to kind of sprinkle in the actual workouts that they need to do. So there's a training program involved. And then I think for this sport, it's really important to supplement that with some fun activities like surfing, um, balance drills, kind of things like that. It, it's easy to push kids as far as you want. It's hard to. Uh, make them remember that it's fun. So the last thing I like to do with the kids before they leave is do a fun activity, whether it's surfing, balance drills, or for the most part, kids love just splashing each other in the water. <laughs> so something to remind them that this is enjoyable and they had a good time, even if they did paddle their butts off for two hours. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Candice? Um, for preparing them for their first race, I would try and assimilate the style of race that they're going to have as much as you can while they're practicing. So if you know that they're going to have a course race with a beach start, I'd line them up on the beach, you know, during the training sessions and run through the race course with them, make sure they know which direction, you know, buoy turns are going to go, make sure they know how to get their board in the water to start the race and kind of run through all the different elements that they may encounter on race day. And then that way they'll feel really comfortable and prepared once the race actually happens. And like Danny said, make sure it's always fun. Uh, make sure to give, you know, positive reinforcement and, and just encourage them the whole way. So how did that sound, Kim? Did you get all that? Okay, great. <laughs> Excellent. So, Danny, tell us about some of the things that you've been doing with kids throughout these last couple years. I believe you sponsor some young kids from around the world. Uh, yeah, as, as far as the stand-up goes, um, 404 decided to pick Sorry, up. Sorry, those technical difficulties are still happening. We got that. That was awesome. <laughs> and we're really looking forward to having uh, Candace and Anthony here on uh, 6-1 uh, June 1st for our Sanford for Waterman's Challenge. Thanks, guys. We're looking forward to coming, Kim. And uh, the girls that are with you, do you want to give a shout-out and let them give a chance to say their names on the webcast? Who's there with you? All right. Well, we again, we're, this is our first call, first live webcast, FCS SUP Talk with Danny and Candace. So, Candace, how about you over the last few years? Some things that you've been uh, doing with kids? Well, we've, you know, last year in January of 2012, uh, you and I, we launched the performance <laughs> paddling competition team. So, that has been super fun. We initially started with 10 kids that we chose from around the country. And it has grown to a group of 23 kids after we had our reapplication process this year. And we're having a lot of fun, you know, doing those team practices and such, along with free kids camps at the various races that we travel to around the world and that's one of my the funnest things for me is working with the kids and allows me to kind of step back from the pressures of, of my own career and just have a good time and you know help help encourage them so excellent and Danny we'll get back to you no I know worries. Kim came back onto the phone <laughs> I think we're gonna go to a pre-submitted question right now so we're gonna go to a question from Christian Del Rosario at Sub Safari, Sub Safari. And what are your main board and fin combinations for short course racing, distance racing, and just plain old sup surfing? Are you riding your, oh, we'll stick with that one first. So what are your uh, fin combinations and board choices for, I guess, all the different aspects? So a pretty open-ended question, um, whoever wants to take it first. 
Uh, for for me, most of the races I do are on 12 sixes. So, whatever the, the mandatory race is, if it's 12 six, I'll race 12 six. If it's 14, I'll race 14. And as far as fin choices, um, FCS, I sat down with them and designed a fin for the races that I normally do, which are open ocean, but not too rough. We don't have a lot of downwinds in the courses I do, and flat water and more battle of paddle style turning races. So I use the FCS, uh, the Danny Ching model. And I put that on pretty much all of my boards, whether it's a flat water board or an open ocean board. That's the fin I use for everything. And I, when I get into big downwind stuff, then I, I switch over to the downwind fin. I believe it's the Spitfire. Nice. Excellent. <laughs> Candice? Well, over the last year and a half, I've been developing my signature fin with FCS. So over the last year and a half, I've been using several different prototypes. I'm trying to design a fin that works across a majority of conditions. So for flat water, downwinding surf races. And I think I've come up with the, the, the final combination and we're, you know, we're putting it through the processes so that you guys can have it um, next year. And, and so, yes, I've been using my fin and sometimes I'll use the Slater Trout fin or sometimes I'll use the Danny Ching bin, but for the most part I've been using my different prototypes. And uh, for, you know, for, for sup surfing, I have been using the rears from the Kelly Slater K 2.1s and the center fin one. has been a um, it's a new prototype for for a new five inch dolphin fin so I've been doing a, a little bit of a two plus one setup I also like the PC sevens for my sup surfing the thruster setup as well and the PC fives excellent so I'm gonna go out on a limb and say for board choice that you're gonna be riding the surf tech Candace Appleby signature model and you're gonna be riding a Danny Ching 404 model so I think the next question, part of Christian Del Rosario's question, and everyone who enters a question that we read out gets an FCS prize. So there's lots of cool prizes that FCS has provided for this live webcast with FCS um, talk. We've got some Jerry Lopez fins that we see on screen. I love the Jerry Lopez fins. So now, going back to Christian Del Rosario's question, board choice. You obviously both have your signature board models. So Christian wants to know if you're writing your custom board models or if you're riding your stock or um, you know production board models in the racing or training that you're doing uh, for me training I always ride a production board and all of our production boards are done by Riviera paddle surf so all of the 404 production goes to Riviera and they mass produce and the boards are you know they're, they're a little bit heavier but they are beautiful they're durable and so training wise I always use those and then when it comes to races, a few weeks before a big race, I'll actually race on a 404 US made board. Um, they're not custom, they just come in two or three different standard widths that we sell around the country. And it's the same board you can purchase at your local store. Excellent, excellent. Candice? Um, I, in training, I ride my signature board that Surf Tech produces. It's the 12.6 Candice Appleby Bark model. And in racing, um, sometimes I use my production board in certain types of races, maybe like a surf race to victory type race where it's um, very turbulent and the board is very dur durable. For some races um, with you know higher competition, um, where there's you know there's a little bit of a weight variable with production and custom board, so sometimes I'll use a custom board. But usually, a cu any custom board I'm using is a prototype to be made into a model for the next year. So. Uh, last year I was racing on my production board a majority of the time and and then once we decided hey for 2014 we're gonna go with a new model I, I started testing out new prototypes in races to make sure that they're proven excellent excellent so we're going to go to a question that was tweeted in by Dave Mead and he tweeted in with hashtag FCS talk 13 and Dave wants to know how many hours do you paddle per week and what other activities that you do to help with your training. And I guarantee that more people besides Dave have the same <laughs> question. So what do you guys do to train? How do you get these amazing bodies and win so many races and rip at surfing? And Danny, I've seen you surf and I know you rip too. So <laughs> Candice, what do you do for training? For training, I have been working out at Beach Fit CrossFit in San Clemente. It's a CrossFit affiliate gym, and I love working out there. Heather Braunwalder is my trainer, and she does a great job for me. CrossFit's a really fun all-body workout. It works as a lot of balance, body weight techniques, lots of legs, so it's really good for stand-up paddling. Um, and I do that three to five times a week when I'm not injured. And as far as paddling, um, paddling, you know, three to five days a week, but lots of surfing also mixed in there, regular longboard surfing, sub surfing, um, and traditional paddle boarding. So 
Excellent, Danny. Uh, training every every year is different. Every year we do a, a handful of different things, but the biggest thing for me is if you want to be better at paddle, paddle more. And the majority of what I do now is paddle a lot, whether it's an outrigger canoe. Uh, every once in a while, I get picked up by the U.S. Dragon Boat team to go race on those things. Stand up, Olympic kayaks, surf skis. So. For what I do most of the time, it's paddle. And for me, it's a minimum 10 hours a week on the water and a maximum, and I try to cap this, but sometimes we go over because the surf gets good, the paddle gets long, but a maximum of 20 hours a week. And it's a big commitment, it's a lot of time. And what I found is the older I get, the smarter I train, and the more of my cross training, other stuff that I do are exercises that allow me to go paddle again. So. I've recently taken up a lot more stretching and yoga and physical therapy type things and then that allows me to get back on the water and train again and then the other thing that you always want to remember to do is when you're training you're breaking down your body so if you don't rest you're never going to rebuild and you're never going to get bigger and stronger so make sure if you do work out a lot you do take the time to recover and let your body build up so the next time you paddle you'll hopefully be faster <laughs> I hope somebody's writing this down for me because I left my notebook and pen at home, but <laughs> you guys are getting great advice and Dave Mead won himself an FCS okay. paddle cover, so he's really excited. Everyone that gets a question read that you guys answer, they win a prize from FCS, so what a cool thing that we're having and I think we're going to go to a phone call that's coming up next and what valuable advice these guys are getting from two of the top stand-up paddle racers and you guys also compete in a variety of other sports I think which is important for everyone to know that you're not just taking your stand-up racing that you've come from a variety of racing backgrounds and we're gonna go to a phone call hi Anthony we have Jim calling in from Michigan and we'll patch him through hold on one second Jim are you there yes great you are live Hi, Jim. Hey, how are you doing? Candace and Danny. I recognize this voice. <laughs> hey, how are you guys doing? Good, how are you? R really good. Hey, we got we got um, a couple questions. Uh, we, we submitted a bunch of questions uh, a couple weeks ago, and we have a, a, a question that's been asked several times, one from Tony and one from Dave. I think that means Tony and Dave might win prizes, so we'll have to ch check and see from with Tyler from FCS, but I think they're both going to win prizes. What do you guys think? Should they both get prizes? I think oh, so. yeah. Okay, <laughs> let's have the questions for Danny and Candace. All right. Well, hey, one of the, one of the questions that we keep, um, keep getting asked here is where, where do we feel or where do you guys feel the sport of stand-up paddling is going to be in the next five to ten years? Love this question. That's loaded. Who wants to grasp this one first? Where do you think the sport of stand-up paddling is going in the next five or ten years? Is uh, so there water on the moon? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, if you look at if you look at five years ago, you know, who would have thought, you know, we'd be where we are now? Everybody kind of said it's going places, but it's it's gone places beyond what we all dreamed of. I I think so. Um, that's kind of an exponential question. That's you know. We all, we all hope it's going in the same positive direction and exploding and, um, you know, it's already slowly being infiltrated on car commercials and big corporate advertising. I see it on credit deodorant. card board, board builders, <laughs> deodorant commercials. Um, you know, I don't know if five years from now is soon enough is, uh, you know, if we can get to the Olympics that fast, I don't know how that's going to be, but I definitely see there being a well-established surfing tour and a well-established racing tour. And, and I see companies, you know, I, I, I hope and I envision there being more stand-up paddle specific sportswear companies jumping on and being developed and, you know, hopefully big brands like Nike and Under Armour and things like that, hopefully they'll decide to, to get on the bandwagon too. So for me, I think that's kind of where I see things going. But again, the, sky, the sky's the limit. I could sit here for an hour and just <laughs> talk about where I think it might be going. Danny? Uh, you look at just the past five years and you look into the future, obviously there's so much that has gone on in the last five years from the racing scene to the surfing to now the fitness exercise aspect. And it's just now tapping into more of the mainstream. Um, I think it has all the potential and all the sex appeal of surfing, which is great, but you can take it anywhere in the world. It doesn't have to be limited to the coast. So um, I'm, I have no idea exactly where it's going, but I see it going in a thousand different directions all at the same time, and that's not a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> one, one thing that I, that I thought of 
about that question is that we all have to remember is that it's not really going to go very far unless we put in the effort to supporting the younger generations because if we don't have a younger generation of athletes competing or just participating in the sport then we won't have a sport so you know rather than it's 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 great to focus on athletes like us and things like that who are in our prime but if we can put our local energies into helping kids in our own communities that's going to help our sport really go to to the limit all right. How how does that how does that sound for some very intelligent answers from two of the smartest people in our sport? I don't think people get a chance to talk to these two a lot because they're so busy racing, but they're very very intelligent. So how about your second question, Jim? You still there? You know what? That, Jim? Yeah, I'm still here. Oh yeah. No, that was actually the same question that a couple people have asked. Okay. So it's it's all one question. <laughs> Excellent. So uh, while we've got you on the line, if you want to give us another quick question, we'll send you another prize. Anything else you want to ask Danny or Candice specifically? Oh, yeah. I've got another good one. This is from Joe here at the L Post. Yeah, Joe. Yeah. We'll send you a, a really cool FCS prize. Hopefully some of the tie-down straps, those are really cool and easy to use. I love them. So what's his question? Uh, his question is, when it comes to paddles and boards, what are a few of your necessities that the board... Um, and paddle must have necessities Ooh. on boards and paddles. Well, so what are we doing with them? <laughs> are we surfing? Are we doing exercise? Are we cruising? Are we racing? Uh, <laughs> you know, I think you know, around here it's, it's a lot of flat water and racing. Okay. So, so you know, in regards to maybe leashes, if you guys like using leashes, if you think it's important, or if it's just um, you know maybe cruising. You know, what do you bring with you when you paddle? When you're in Michigan, what are you going to be paddling on is basically his question for, to keep it safe and to keep it fun. Uh, if, if we're cruising around, um, you know what, pretty much anything I can stand on will do. Uh, <laughs> I, I like the more stable boards because I can play around on them, do more tricks. When I'm not racing, there's no need to go fast. Uh, I always bring a leash and a life jacket whenever possible, and I always like to bring water. I mean, the, the necessities, uh, those are probably the minimum that you want to leave with, and then with this sport, there's a million add-ons you can add on to your uh, <laughs> to your board, to your paddle, to everything else, so to make it a little more fun or a little safer. Okay. Candice, anything to add? For me, necessities. When it comes to um, you know equipment and accessories, it's easy. FCS. They've got it. They've got everything. They they've got fins. They've got leashes. They've got all the little gadgets you know for your boards and for for getting your board onto your car, keeping your board nice in a bag while you're on your way to the beach. Um, when it comes to boards, you know, surf tech, um, surf tech and bark, you know, there's so many different fun things in that in that realm to choose from. Uh, one of my favorite boards right now is the new 11 foot crossover. It's a signature board I have with surf tech and Joe Bark and that's just a really fun all around great board. It's got a race board design but it's a little bit wider and more stable for the everyday paddler but if they wanted to go fast it has the nice race, um, you know, displacement hole outline. It's 11 feet, so it fits in any any vehicle fairly easily, um, and it actually surfs really well. So <laughs> that's just a, you know something fun to just go and have a good time, and always got to have my quick blade paddle, and uh, you know those are those are my necessities, <laughs> and and a bikini or some sweet water. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking the that uh, the FCS racing leash is one that's. Um, very, very nice to use because it's got the, the, the coil, but it's also got a little bit of the straighter yeah. um, leash, leash extension. So it's really perfect for doing races and just cruising around when you don't want your leash just dragging around behind you. Stays out of the way. Stays out of the way. <laughs> so the FCS race leash for touring around or racing, but just the regular, you know, six or eight foot uh, short board leash for sup surfing. Is that what you guys use? Yeah, if you're looking at travel stuff, uh, bagging your equipment is huge. Um, I, I normally don't bag my equipment, but now that I actually have nice stuff, it's it's mandatory by uh, yeah, it's mandatory by my sponsors. It's amazing how quickly things can get beat up when you leave them in the sun, leave them in the back of your truck. If you can throw your paddle in a bag, you can throw your board in a bag. It's night and day difference. So uh, the, the resale value on them is a lot better. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, thank you guys so much uh, in Michigan for calling in. That's J Jim from, is this the Outpost? Of yeah, I want to give a, a big shout-out to you guys, too. The Outpost of Fallen, um, 
you know, Rick and Lisa and, and Jim and everybody over there, you guys are awesome. And I went there a few years ago and they have a beautiful shop. One of the most beautiful stand-up shops or outdoor product stores I've ever seen. So keep it up. Thanks for your And weren't they surfing, us, surfing with us that day at San Onofre after yeah. Battle of the Paddle? Dan and Chief was were. out there. Candace yeah. was out there. And we saw all you guys out there. So thanks for calling in. Thanks for tuning in and uh, continuing right. to support FCS. We're going to now go to a Twitter question. They tweeted in at hashtag FCS Talk 13. And it's Craig Hasty. Excuse me if I'm mispronouncing your name, Craig. But Craig wants to know, what size paddle do you use? And how, sh and how should I decide paddle length? So I think they're talking blade size. What blade size do you use? And then how does he determine paddle length? Very good question. <laughs> Very good question. <laughs> You want to take this one? Um, first? Sure. Um, the blade size I use is uh, approximately 100 square inches. So uh, this year I started my own paddle company called Hippo Stick, and I started with my dad. We got a bunch of different sizes, and the one I prefer right now is the 100 square inch paddle. It's the Owl Pro. We named it after him. And basically, I like the bigger paddle because for me, um, the bigger paddle makes the catch a little bit heavier, which I like because I like the paddle a little more aggressive but at the times when it gets very heavy and it's too difficult, I can always set most of the blade and not the entire thing. Hmm. And that allows it to feel lighter. It allows me to be quicker and accelerate more. But then when I'm finally up to speed, the bigger blade, I can just generate more speed with it. So the smaller paddles, I mean, obviously for size, for strength, um, it's gonna affect you a little more. So I weighed the uh, pros and cons on the size of the blade and Having more speed is better for me, and if my fitness fails, then I got big problems. <laughs> How about uh, le paddle length? Um, there's a thousand theories for that, and there's all these different measurements. The problem is the boards you ride are different. So if you have a race board, you're high off the water, versus a surfboard, you're low, so that changes your height. Your legs are different heights or different lengths, so I actually have really short legs and a long torso, and then I have a long wingspan. So I've heard shaka, I've heard somewhere between six and 12 inches. Um, I think six inches is a great place to start, but there's so many variables involved. The best thing to do is get an adjustable paddle, start there, and then kind of play with it. You'll find if your top shoulder starts hurting a lot, then your paddle is usually too long for what you like to do. Um, what I found with racing now is because the races are shorter and more intense, I'm getting my paddle shorter because if I'm closer to the water, if I'm closer to the blade, I can pull a lot more aggressively, put a lot more power into it, the leverage isn't too bad. But in uh, in hindsight, when you finish, your lower back is wrecked. <laughs> <laughs> pros and cons, pros yeah. and cons. So uh, I, I think the adjustables are, are the way to go if you're still searching for your height. But for me, I actually use a 78 inch paddle now. I started at an 83 when I first started paddling. And wow. again, the, the new Hippo Stick Owl Pro, 100 square inches. Candice? Um, for me, like, like Danny said, you know, we, there's lots of different theories, the shaka, the fist, the 10 inches. I actually measure using my arm. So I put my arm straight up in the air and I, I keep my shoulders nice and level. My feet are straight on the ground. I'm barefoot when I do this. I put my arm straight up in the air, keeping my shoulders, like I said, and straight. And then I bend my hand and I used to start, I used to go with my blade, the top of my blade hitting right underneath my wrist, which for me was 79 and a half inches. I'm 5'9". Like Danny said, I don't think it's so much your height, but I think it's more your arms and your reach that matter. So that's why I use my arms to measure. In the last few years, I've gone down to a smaller paddle. I've gone down to a 77 for racing, but I'm able to use my body as a measuring tape and know without even you know, having to, having to measure a paddle if it's the right paddle for me. So, you know, if I'm downwind paddling, I'll use a 79 and a half, which, which goes right under here. I'm on a bigger board, I'm more out of the water. If I'm in a BOP style race or more of a flat water style race, I'll be between 77 and 77 and a half. And when I'm sub surfing, I'm between 75 and 75 and a half. So I think paddles are a lot like golf clubs you don't need one you know to do the same shot you need a putter you need a driver you need all of the, all of the different facets of it um as far as blade size i like i've been bouncing back and forth between the quick blade flyweight which is 83 square inches and the 90 um for flat water racing i really like the 90 it's you know it's it it catches more water and for quick high cadence races like the BOP and for surfing I like the 83. So. Yeah the measurement strategy you use is really good you gotta remember when you put the 
paddle in the water, the whole blade's gone. So if your paddle is 18 inches tall, you gotta remember, 18 inches disappear when you take your stroke. And so when that 18 inches is gone, where is your hand position? So a lot of people like to do the put your hand up, measure to about your wrist, give or take. And for me, I have an exact perfect bend I like, but like you said, you, your body's the same size all the time, so human measuring stick. Yeah. 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 Human measuring stick. It's yeah. about this big. Yeah. <laughs> so great question. I know everyone had the same question and really, really thoughtful answers. And remember, all the questions that get answered, they win a prize. So I believe it was uh, Doug, I think, who's going to be getting an... Craig. Craig, thank you, who's going to be getting FCS premium tie downs. So those things are so those. sweet. I know. Uh, Danny and I are going to come borrow those straps from you because we need to borrow some. We got a lot of boards to tie down. So it looks like we're gonna be moving on <clears throat> to a phone call. So it looks like we've got a call coming in for Candice or Danny here on FCS SUP Talk. You can tweet in at FCS Talk 13, hashtag FCS Talk 13. So I think Danny might be starting a Twitter account sometime in the near future, I heard. <laughs> If you win Molokai twice and Battle of the Paddle as many times, I heard you have to start a Twitter account. <laughs> well, here we go. We'll see what this caller says about the Danny Tweed Twitter account. Hi, Anthony. We have John calling in from Massachusetts. Hold one second. Massachusetts. People from everywhere. John, Hi. are you there? Yeah, I'm here. You're live. All right. Hi, John. How you doing today? How's it going, Anthony? Doing wonderful. I'm here with the beautiful Candace Appleby and the amazing Danny Ching. If you want to say hi to those two. As always. Hey guys, how you doing? Hey, how's it going? Thanks going for calling. Well. <laughs> so you guys have any questions out there in Massachusetts? Are you at a shop right now or where are you calling from? Yeah, we're at uh, Safari Sup and Surf. Safari <laughs> Sup and Surf, excellent. Hello everyone to Safari <laughs> Sup and Surf. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> Uh, do you guys have a question that you'd like to ask Danny or Candace or both of them? Yeah, I'd love to ask this to uh, probably both of them. Uh, but Wise choice. Go ahead. Um, what is, um, for, for race day training, what is your immediate, for like day before and day of, what does your preparation consist of in terms of diet and exercise? Okay, so I'm, I'm going to maybe help them on this question because they do so many races. Let's just pick out maybe a big race. So let's say... Well, let's I mean, pick out, say, the two-day, like, the Battle of the Paddle for that, you know... Uh, biggest races of the year. So <laughs> pre-Battle of the Paddle, what are you guys, what are you two doing to prepare as far as what are you eating and how much are you paddling? Is that your question? Yes. Yes. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. Well, Candace? for nutrition, this is a question that we get asked a lot. What do you eat the night before the race? What do you eat for breakfast the morning before the race? For me, I like I like salmon and salad and rice, and so usually I'm eating something like that. That's what I like. But I, you know, just because that's a meal that I like doesn't necessarily mean that's the meal for everybody. But what I like to encourage people to do is figure out what it is that they like, what's their go-to meal that gives them great energy for the next day, and, and be prepared to have that same meal every day before you know before your races. Know what you're gonna have. Don't just have the pasta that, that is supplied maybe by the race. Be, be prepared and know that you're gonna put something in your body that works for you. Um, as far as the morning, it, morning's the same thing. Some, sometimes I'll go through phases where I don't eat breakfast, which is not, not very good. Um, you know, for a race like the Battle of the Paddle, if I'm going through a phase of not eating breakfast right away in the morning, I have to train myself a couple weeks ahead of time to eat breakfast. So that way the day of the race, when you have nerves and all those things going through your body, it's going to be easier for you to eat breakfast that day. Um, again, the meal itself is going to be different for everybody. People ask this question all the time. I say, hey, if you eat Cheerios every day, eat Cheerios before the race. Just because I may, you may eat an omelet doesn't mean you should eat an omelet. I don't really eat an omelet, but um, <laughs> I usually will have something like fruit and yogurt <laughs> and granola. And every year it's kind of different. Um, you know, racing nerves and things, you know, they, they give you different feelings in your body. And it makes some, sometimes it makes food not very appetizing so sometimes you'll have to resort to eating bars um you know and and then you get sick of those certain bars and then the next year you're eating a different kind of bar you know i've gone through greek yogurt can't really do that anymore gone through the trader joe's energy bars can't really do those anymore you know so Can figure you know? out <laughs> figure out what you like and and make sure you have something and because 
like you know like on race day there's all kinds of people pulling you all different places or or for for us at least there is and and it's important to be prepared and you know have something have something to always eat that you know your body's going to be able to handle so yeah i mean the biggest thing is there's no one food for anyone um or for everyone it, it's you, you gotta go with what you're used to and so a lot of the preparation comes before you get to the day before but day before for me is I'll actually get on the water and I'll do about 20 or 40 minutes of hard paddling and it's a warm up and it's a couple good sprints and I usually like to get to the point where I feel like I'm ready to go and then right at that point where you really want to do a hard piece, stop. <laughs> and that's that's your last training session before the big race. And other than that, uh, the food stuff for me is always, I tend to eat the same things just about every day. And before a big race, I find my body starts to crave certain things. So if you're craving a steak, you're probably low in iron and you probably need to eat a steak. Um, sometimes I crave pasta. And so I usually just kind of go with the feeling, but it's something that I'm used to eating. It's something that I've eaten before. I never try anything new the night before or the day of. And in the mornings for me, it's, it's an omelet. It's usually a veggie omelet. Um, that's just what I normally eat in the morning because eggs are easy to cook, veggies are easy to cut up, and, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the uh, fiance usually has it prepared when I wake up, so that's what I get. <laughs> but uh, definitely, you know, listen to your body, eat what you normally eat, and uh, don't try anything different the day of the race. That's uh, it's usually not a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Great advice, and the fiance, it was the first time yeah. I've heard that come out of your mouth, <laughs> and again, congratulations on your engagement. Thank um, you. and, Thanks for your question, John. How, how is that for answers from these two intelligent, amazing athletes? Sounds great. So anything else that you have for him while you got him on the line? And know that you'll be getting your FCS prize. I'm not certain what your prize will be, but I think it will be maybe the Slater Trout Fin, possibly the Ooh. FCS paddle cover. We'll see what your prize is going to be, but thanks for calling in, John. It looks like an FCS weed fin for you. Um, excellent fin when you're paddling through um, lots of different conditions in open ocean or flat water if you're encountering lots of seaweed or other type of seagrass or things like that. So um, thanks again for calling in all the way from Massachusetts and uh, we look forward to um, seeing you out there at the Battle of the Paddle and listening to all the training tips from Danny and Candice. All right, thanks a lot. Aloha. Aloha. Bye. All right, guys, you guys are so amazing. I feel so honored and lucky to be sitting here and getting a chance to talk with you guys and present that to all these people watching in the webcast. And people are actually, you know, uh, uh, engaging and tweeting in lots of questions. And we've got a tweet that just came in from hashtag FCS Talk 13 from Carlos Orrego. And Carlos tweets in, how do you choose? Oh, this is a great one. I love it already. How do you choose which races to compete on? Hope to see you race in Chile one day. So we miss races in Chile, but how do you choose? There's, you can literally race every day of the week if you wanted to. <laughs> There's 17 different world championships and all different sorts of races. What are you racing? Um, for me, I kind of build my year off of a, a handful of big races with, with competitions being so intense and just the paddlers being so good. Uh, I actually have to hand select maybe, maybe two or three races a year that I'm gonna peak for. And it just takes that much training to go in to, to be ready on those days. But as far as the other races go, a lot of it comes down to the event. Um, because I'm part owner of 404 and Hippo Stick, for me, being able to grow our brand and, and or the sport in an area is huge. Mm -hmm. So beyond prize money, beyond race course, if I can go somewhere new and, and bring the sport there and then see that it's something that's gonna develop and there's someone there who can have boards for people to demo and stuff like that, that's usually a big sell for me. And then the other one is development of the youth. Uh, Candace said it earlier and nailed it on the head. Without the youth, this sport isn't going forward, but fortunately, they're doing a great job of that. We sponsor a handful of really, really good kids, as do a lot of other companies, so I think we're very fortunate that way. So, I mean, if I don't see the event, either growing the sport or promoting it in, in a way that seems, you know, where I, I think the sport should head, then it, it's kind of a turn off. But fortunately, there are a lot of big, big races that have great races, have great elite style races, open divisions, junior divisions, and they, they do a, a whole event out of it. So 
uh, when I see stuff like that, then the hardest thing for me to do is figure out how do I get all my gear over there so I can <laughs> race. <laughs> uh, Ch- Chile's a tough one. I can't fit my board on the plane. They keep sending it back. <laughs> how about you, Candice? You do pretty much more races and a lot of other paddlers out there. How do you pick which ones to go to? Um, well, for the last for the last couple of years, you know, it started with. You know all of the the Hennessy's races. You know Paul Hennessy has been supporting traditional paddleboarding for many years. So my racing experiences started in Hawaii and started with the Hennessy's races, and then it's developed. You know you add the Battle of the Paddle, then you add the Carolina Cup, and then you add the Race of the Lake of the Sky, then you add this, and then the next year comes and you're like, hey, I had a fun time at all those events. I'm just gonna go to all those ones again. You know, so <laughs> some of the races I go to are, you know, I go because I went the year before and they treated me great. I had a great time. You know, and it's it's more about having a full event for the for the community, getting to meet people, getting to connect and and share about the different companies that I represent, um, and and go to a new place. You know, and in it help experience the sport in a new place and be an ambassador for it and support the different communities that are putting on races all over the country and around the world. And of course, as a professional athlete, we also have to you know make money too. So it, it helps when races have you know good. Um, gender equal prize purses or close to it and and so I like to support those races as well and you know I like to go to fun places too so that's <laughs> that, all, that all comes down to it so excuse me new places so if any if there are any race directors out there listening you're thinking about putting on a race so I think one way to get these two is to pay for their airfare put them up while you're there <laughs> treat them to meals every <laughs> night and hey Somebody asked where is stand-up paddling going in the next five to ten years. I honestly see the sport going to where these two athletes and other athletes will be getting appearance fees. And many sports where the sponsors get a chance to promote the athlete's name, they actually pay them money for their name to be able to, you know, Tiger Woods and many other golfers are getting million dollar appearance fees. So the day that Danny Ching and Candace Appleby get million dollar appearance fees, I'll be stoked. And so thanks for tweeting in. You'll be winning a prize. And we've got some amazing prizes. It's not just the fins and the leashes and the tie downs, but they're giving away FCS board bags. They're giving away some really, you really can, amazing. Like, you can like camp in those things too. <laughs> oh, I, people can camp in those 12, six or 14 if it's one person or two person. Yeah. And they have the day bags as well. So it looks like we're- Day bags are good for naps. <laughs> <laughs> a siesta bag. I think we're getting ready for a call. You guys want to take more calls, tweets? What do you guys want to do? This yeah, is your show. Cool. Another call. We got some callers ready. Let's go to Aaron who's on our switchboard. You'll see Danny stretching throughout the course of the uh, webcast. He's got a lot of sore muscles from paddling 32 miles really hard with a sprint at the end. Hi, Anthony. We have Judy from Oregon. Hold one second, please. Judy, are you there? I'm here. Hi, we are live. Go ahead. Hi there, Candace and Danny. My question is, um, I know it's not always easy to train as hard and as consistently as you all do, and I wonder if the people who are actually inspired by you and tell you how much you inspire them to train, do they in turn inspire you all in some way? Absolutely. I mean, it 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 really always helps to have positive encouragement at events and I, I can't thank fans more, you know, they, they help reiterate why we do what we do and that's to connect with people, you know, that's that's why I am doing what I do in this community is because I, I love to go places and meet new people and to have the opportunity to, to meet people and chat and, you know, hear encouraging things, it really does inspire us and help us continue to do what we do and, you know, for me, I know it's it's definitely a big big fuel for my fire, so I'm very appreciative of all the all the support in the community. Uh, yeah, the the fan awesome. support and and the support you get from uh, all you, all your friends and family and and the people on the beach it, it's incredible and it, it's definitely inspiring when you have people come up to you who you've never met before happiest people in the world and tell you all these wonderful things you did for them and uh, it, it it's always a very humbling experience so to be able to see that and to be able to experience that everywhere we go is is pretty incredible and that's definitely something that uh, lifts you a little bit when things are tough so. Uh, hard mornings training, 
all that fun stuff and then uh especially in races and stuff you, you hear the, the crowd on the beach yell and it doesn't matter whether it's for you or not it's it, it's always uh something that gets you going so to all those fans out there of danny and candace and all of the other amazing athletes that we have in their sport just you know a little hey good job today it really does go a long way you heard it from these two right from their mouths and thank you for your great question and you're going to win an fcs prize as well uh do you have any anything else you'd like to ask these guys are you talking to me, Judy? Yeah, Judy, if there's anything else you want to ask while we have you on the line. Yeah, do you have any pointers? I'm going to do my first Maliko Belcher oh. run uh, on the 11th of May with my husband, and we've never done it. You've <laughs> never done So you're doing your first run in during the Olukai race? Yes. My pointer yes. is to do a couple runs before the race. If you can get to Maui a few days early... They have some great shuttle services over there where they will drop you off with your board. And I'm sure that there's some great professional athletes on Maui that you could get your hands on and even hire them to take you paddling. I would recommend that highly. Um, that, would, we'll that would definitely be something, you know, and, and it's not the day before the race kind of a thing, maybe two or three days before the race. That way you can rest and recover from, you know, from doing a practice run. And, um, and yeah, like I said, there's lots of people on Maui who should be able to help you. I believe Susie Cooney is doing something uh, maybe the weekend before or earlier. They're doing a pre-Maliko practice run through Susie Trains Maui. So you she might, did it. She did it already? She just did it with 90 people. And oh. uh, we, we wanted to be there for it. She's been helping us train by uh, email. Excellent. Oh, okay. Well, I would I would reach out to her again, and you know, I don't know if she does privates, you know, but she might have, you know, a private lesson that she could maybe she could escort you or or point you out to somebody on Maui who would be able to escort you on a on a couple runs prior to the event. So for the, the, those of you out there watching, she's going to be talking about the Malika run, which is a very famous downwind run in Maui. And Judy, uh, before you go, I'd like to ask you, what is one of your favorite FCS products? Um, I guess I would have to say I don't. Need, I'm not very technical, but I know board bags are something that I'm always looking for the best, and I think uh, you guys pretty much have that covered. Excellent. Board. No pun intended, right? We got the board bags covered, right. and you want to protect your investment. That's definitely, if you're buying one of the 404 boards from Danny or. Candace's signature surf tech board you definitely want to keep those protected and covered and dry that's one of the great things about the FCS bags is that the boards are able to actually dry and not get all smelly and moldy <laughs> while they're in the board bag so thanks so much Judy for your call and I think that you asked two questions that you should get two prizes so I'm going to have to talk with Tyler about that and I'm not sure what we'll figure out but I think you should get two prizes so <laughs> thanks for calling in okay thank you Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. You guys having Bye. fun? Bye. <laughs> you guys having fun? Oh, yeah. I'm having a great time. I'm having a great time. And shout out to Andre, Andre and Aaron and Martha and Eric and the whole crew who's helping this happen. And uh, Tyler Calloway from FCS for making it all happen as well. Looks like we're going to go to a Twitter question. So you can tweet a question in to hashtag FCSTalk13. And this tweet is coming in from Sup Surf Club, and they want to ask: Do you suggest yoga for balancing out your? Excuse me. Do you suggest yoga for balancing out your training? How about hydration tips? So I think they're talking yoga outside of actually being on your board, and then they're asking about hydration tips for, let's say, during race hydration tips. Uh, yoga is a great, great way to kind of stretch out your body, and uh, what one thing that stand up will do is. It takes all of your muscles and they tend to be your front muscles and pulls everything forward. So if you get an opportunity to stretch or go to the gym, I think yoga is a great way to do it is to open everything back up. And if you can balance it out, then it'll allow you to, to train some more and, and actually train, train harder, train faster, recover faster. And then the hydration, um, there's so many hydration systems out there. Uh, I've used, probably used them all. <laughs> everything from Camel Pack to Hydro Pack to a couple funny triathlon systems. They all work, but uh, there, there's certain ones people like the best, and it's usually a comfort thing. And for what, you know, everything's better than water nowadays. The Gatorade <laughs> stuff, the uh, Endura Lights, all these things. Um, again, that, that's a personal preference. 
So you look at all the stuff, some of them are heav heavily chemical. I know Candace and I talked about that earlier. Some of them are a little more holistic and natural, but basically it's, it's a preparation thing. If you try it in practice, you'll find what your body likes and what it, what it gets used to. And for me, I just use Gatorade. <laughs> what color? Red. Red Gatorade for Danny Ching. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. um, well, as far as the yoga, um, I should do more yoga. That's something that I'm always <laughs> like, I want to do more yoga, you know? So I think yoga is great. And also for balancing endoboarding. Endoboarding is such a great thing to do to practice your balance. <laughs> um, you know, it's something that you can do and have, have a little bit of like a balance workout at home. And even if you live somewhere that's cold, like... Oregon or Michigan or you know you can be doing it you know in the off season which is great and with hydration I think nothing really works quite like hydrating the day before I think if you go into a race dehydrated from the day before there's not really anything that you can do to undo that um, you know but if you're if you're totally well hydrated from the day before and you don't use a water pack you know I mean, if you're in a regular five-mile race, you're, race you're, it's not going to, you know, kill <laughs> you. Make it. you know? But um, packs are great for races that are, you know, over. If it's if it's over three miles and I'm racing in Florida or Puerto Rico, I'm for sure got a water pack on just so that I can wet my throat and because it's really hot, I'm going to sweat a lot more there. If it's somewhere else and it's over five or seven miles, I've got a water pack. I think your body needs like one ounce every 10 minutes when you're at its maximum exertion for endurance something something like that so you know just a sip every mile or a sip every 10 minutes and and you're good to go you know i like to go with the more natural techniques i'm not a food coloring you know person but um i've heard you know lemon just simple lemon juice in water even fiji water it already has the electrolytes in it and simple you know lemon juice will actually cool your body from the inside out even because you know a lot of times the ice if you put ice in a pack it melts practically by the time you're in the race so if it's got a little lemon juice in there that's nice and cooling helps control the body temperature and that's my hydration tip <laughs> that's what i've been doing wrong i've been taking coconuts on my board <laughs> opening them up to have the coconut water i heard that's good for you but no you have it's to drink that the store. Tastes a little more time. <laughs> <laughs> all right thanks for uh your twitter question from sup surf club they tweeted into hashtag fcs talk 13. I believe that's the Clark family, the John Clark, Aliana, Manya. They win an FCS prize. Lots of yeah. cool prizes from MC FCS. So they're going to be stoked. Maybe they want a Slater Trout fin, Danny Ching fin, Spitfire fin, maybe a coupon for the Candace Appleby fin coming out in 2014. <laughs> so we'll see. Looks like we're going to a call next. So great answer to the Twitter question. Remember, you can keep tweeting in, but we'll be going to a phone call. We're getting lots of great calls from all over. We've had. Oregon, Massachusetts, Sub Safari. Hi, Anthony. We have Chucky from Massachusetts. Hold one second. Chucky, are you there? I'm here. You are live. Oh, great. Hello. <laughs> well, uh, I want to. Hi. Hi, Candace. Hi. Hi, Danny. I just want to say thank you so much for taking the time to share your time with everybody who's, who's logged in. It's been a real treat for us to, to watch you all evening. Thank you. We're happy to be here. <laughs> Thank you very much. No, it's Excellent. really good stuff that we're getting from these two tonight, I think. Do you have a question that oh, you'd yeah, like to this ask? Is, this is, I do have a question, and uh, hopefully it doesn't uh, repeat what you just uh, were talking about. I couldn't hear the entire uh, answer when you were talking about uh, fitness. But uh, how, do you, how, do you, uh, how do you work through injuries that you might have sustained in your training? Um, and if, if so, if, is it something that's, uh, or, or, or do you know of people who have serious injuries who've been able to overcome it through paddling? Ooh, that's actually that's a, a good really good question. question. Yeah. So I think we'll let um, Candace talk about this one, asking about how do you train through injuries, and then maybe Danny talk about, you know, people that have helped themselves through their own personal injuries by the sport of stand-up paddling. Um, as far as, you know, you know, continuing and training with injuries. I've, I've had an injury for the last few years, and if, it, if an injury doesn't get better, you need to get it fixed and stop training through it. If you're, if you're injured, you should stop <laughs> using your injured body. And otherwise, it starts to affect all the other parts of your body, which is something that I realized, hey, it's okay to take six weeks out so that you can be 100% rather than be afraid of missing out on some fun time on the water and then you know you hurt all the other parts of your body and everything gets thrown off because everything is connected um as far as dealing you know with injuries as an athlete 
you know, just keeping myself busy and focusing on the things beyond competing that I can contribute to the sport helps you stay sane and healthy, especially if you're an active person. It's, it's hard to be sidelined from anything, whether you're a competitive athlete or just a recreational athlete. It's always hard to not be able to do the things that you like, so find things that, you know, can, can distract you. Um, and, but, you know, as far as avoiding injuries, like, like Danny said, yoga is something that's great and, and, and rest. Um, that's probably something that I have not been as good at is, is resting after training, um, which is why I'm here, you know, today with, with you know, post-surgery. But that's, that's, uh, that's life, you know. So what do you think, Danny? I think, I think rest is a really probably an important thing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, if, if you're injured, there's a difference between it hurts and it's broken. If you're injured, you actually have to stop and fix what the injury is. And we got a lot of people um, who have had, in our outrigger team that have had knee surgeries, ACL, Achilles, and because they're sitting down, they can get back on the water and, and do some exercise sooner. So I think there's a therapy to being on the water after a, a major injury. But on the other hand, when you work out, when you paddle, you're breaking yourself down. And if you don't have, if, if you're not recovering and you're not resting, then the, the injury is only going to aggravate. I, I've had um, multiple shoulder injuries, elbow injuries, and what tends to happen is if you hurt one thing, you try and compensate for it, and then something else goes. I had a bicep tendonitis in one shoulder, I kept paddling, then it went to the other shoulder, I kept paddling, then it went to my <laughs> elbow. And somewhere along the lines, I stopped when I realized my knee was going out. <laughs> so so it, it, it's something you definitely have to take care of yourself. And it, if you're broken, you're broken. That's, that's something you have to stop, rest, and, and fix. And then one, once you have it fixed, then you have to start slow, which is always hard for people that are active. <laughs> Just take it slow, one step at a time. So uh, t take care of your body. If you are injured, please take care of that. And then uh, as you come back, you know, take your time. <laughs> See how that goes. <laughs> and just to answer, maybe I'll just answer the last part about, you know, the sport of stand-up paddling. And, you know, it's just so very low impact. You know, if, he's, if you're not trying to race Danny Ching or Candace <laughs> Appleby, you can just go out there and have a very relaxing time working a lot of your body parts. But also I think it's just being out in the open and, the you know, the quote-unquote zen of being on the water, <laughs> which is something that's really special and unique about our sport. That's I, why it's, you know, growing so much. It's as hard or as easy as you want it to be. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks for your wonderful question. Well, thanks so much. Uh, it was very, very informative. Thank you. And are you there, uh, are you at a shop right now, or wh where are you calling from? Massachusetts? Yeah, I'm in uh, uh, Surfari, there's a surf shop in Massachusetts, and uh, we had a, a paddle odor, and it was awesome, and now we're uh, uh, kicking back with some veggies and, and chips and watching you guys on the big screen. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thanks for tuning in, and uh, remember everything that these guys are teaching us, and uh, thanks again. You will be receiving your Thank FCS you so prize as well, and uh, thanks for calling. <laughs> Thank you. Have a great evening. You too. Bye. Bye. We're just having a good time here. I mean, who knows that we would get to be learning? I would get to be learning all this stuff from you guys. And, you know, really hope that everyone else out there is getting a chance to hear and learn all this valuable information. I mean, getting a chance to see you guys every day is one thing, but hearing it come out of your mouth is a whole separate thing. And thanks everyone who's interacting via Twitter for tweeting in at hashtag FCSTalk13. We've got a Twitter question coming from... Uh, a gentleman that tweeted in. It looks like Breed Freak is his Twitter handle, the main freak. Okay, and we're all freaks in our own crazy way. So, how much he tweets in, how much of your race success do you attribute to fitness versus everything else, like techniques, race experience, etc.? So, how much is it you guys are just super fit, badass fit people? Or how much do you think technique and experience comes into play? Well, I think they both kind of go hand in hand. If you're the super fittest person in the world and you have no technique and stand up, you're not going to go very far. But if you have excellent technique and you're, you know, super out of shape, you're going to get beat too. So it's really a combination of a combination of both. Um, you know, it helps if you're a fit person to start off, and it and it helps if you have great teeth technique naturally um so you know that's that's definitely something if someone's an, a natural born athlete of course that always that always helps but um you know 
to compete at the highest level, you got to have the full package of preparation, fitness, and experience. Uh, yeah, I, I've I've done clinics um, all all around the world basically, and and this question actually comes up a lot. You know, can I just technique my way to the front? And hmm. no, <laughs> no, you can't. There, there is a certain amount of fitness that is necessary. And, and what I found is you, you spend time training your fitness and you spend time training your technique. And they're two completely different things. If you try and do both at the same time, you'll do both of them kind of. So uh, what I found and the best way for me to explain it is technique will help you win. Race strategy will help you win. Preparation will help you win. Fitness will fix every mistake you just made. So if you have a bad race strategy, you can fitness your way back to the front. If you have bad technique, you can fitness your way to the front for a while until your fitness doesn't work anymore. But what happens is the, the fitness is kind of that, it's that saving grace. If everything's equal, then fitness is the most important. If your technique's equal, if you guys have the same race strategy, if you have everything equal, then it's all about fitness. But for the most part, I use the fitness as that's my last resort, that's the last thing I use I'm going to try and out strategize, I'm going to try and out technique, but every time I make a mistake, if I'm fitter, bigger, or stronger, I can fix it and pull myself back to where I want to be. And, and so they're all, they're all different, they're all important in their own right, but I, I think the fitness, and you look at the young guys that are coming up, they have funny techniques, they do weird things, but they never <laughs> slow down because they're like 19 years old. And it's, it's pretty incredible. Everyone asks me about that Connor Baxter stroke and the technique. I go, well, look at his paddle. Look how fast he's moving that thing. <laughs> I wouldn't do it that way. I'd rip my back out, but he's incredibly fit. And I, I see Kyle Lane do the same thing, but now you see their improvements are, or their, their technique is getting a little more fine-tuned and they're improving on that. And once that happens, hopefully they'll be older and less fit <laughs> <laughs> wow so, uh, I, I hope that helps out <laughs> i'm pretty sure that's going to help out everyone I danny. Oh, no. No. <laughs> danny for those of you that don't know he also helps coach uh the canoe club at la Nikila canoe club over in redonda beach helps a lot of the youth um and beginning paddlers as well as i mean paddles all over the world you know <laughs> one man and six man and Looks like you are going to win an FCS Spitfire fin, I believe, uh, for a bread freak that tweeted in to hashtag breed freak. Sorry, I'm the bread freak. I love bread. <laughs> Probably not the best before a day, before a race, but I love me some bread. So congratulations for winning an FCS fin, and thanks for tweeting in at hashtag FCS Talk 13. I'm enjoying myself here with Candice and Danny. Danny, fresh off of his engagement and Candace is fresh on her way to North Carolina for the Carolina Cup. Candace will be enjoying this race from the sidelines and we've got another Twitter <laughs> Twitter Twitter question coming in. Lucky me. Hashtag uh, let's just say the question. What does Sup Loves Life Lifestyle mean to you? What does all this mean to you guys? What's the lifestyle of our sport that you guys are helping create? What would you say the SUP lifestyle is? Our lifestyle? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I mean, as, as a whole, I'd, I, I'd rather, you know, the SUP lifestyle can be kind of summed up, I think, with the SUP community. And when, if you were to talk about the SUP community as a whole, it's, you know, a group of people that love a sport and they want to do it as much as they can because they have so much fun and they get fit, they get healthy, and they treat other people good. They have a good time together, they have fun, and they kind of share it with all types of other people. So our community and our lifestyle, I think it's uh, hand in hand. And, you know, for me, SUP and the ocean as a whole is, is my lifestyle. I don't know. How do you really sum it all up? Um, from, from what I've seen, uh, that the SUP lifestyle to me, it, it, it's kind of that whole surfing culture with the, the whole tropical, in the water, fitness, but it's got a lot more of a family feel, yeah. where it's more everyone's included, there, there's, no, there, there's no individualism behind it. it it's, it's a whole lot of just, it, it seems like a big family everywhere you go. So you meet people you've never met and you're instantly accepted uh, you see a random stand-up paddler paddling by, and they stop and wave and talk and say hello. And so I, I'd say it's it's that kind of that Hawaiian surfing lifestyle, but more inclusive, and that translates everywhere. So it's it's a pretty good thing. 
Yeah, excellent. I don't know about you guys, but I haven't seen very many people that are stand up paddling and not smiling. Yeah. <laughs> not a lot of frowns out there on the water. And thanks for your question via Twitter. You'll be winning an FCS prize as well. And we're winding down our uh, first set, first show. We're going to be going to a live call. Um, it's going to be our last call, I believe, or we might sneak in two more calls, but you might be our last caller, so thanks for calling in. I'm going to answer the phone via my computer. <laughs> Hi, Anthony. We have Judy from Massachusetts calling, and we will put her through. Hold one second. Judy, are you there? I'm here. You are live. Thank you. Um, I'm actually here with my daughter, who's 15, and um, we started paddleboarding a couple of years ago. And I'm thinking I wasn't doing anything this cool when I was 15, and I don't know what advice she has for her um, on where she can take paddleboarding. Um, well, well, where, you know, I mean, there's so She's many stuck. places <laughs> to take it. There's so many places. Um, you know, is, is this is your daughter, and is she, are you racing already? Is she racing already? Or... She's not racing. She's not racing yet. I started uh, doing some rec races last year, and I think that she should get into racing, and uh, she's not so sure about that. Well, you know, my advice is to just... Just have fun with it, and you know the ultimate goal of all of this is is really to have fun and to enjoy it. So if the competitive part of it isn't for you, then then just you know enjoy going and paddling. And I would encourage you to you know get your friends who don't paddle into paddling. That way you can go out and have a group of people to have fun with. And and hey, you never know, you might get to the point where you decide you want to race. And you know I would say just reach out to other kids. Maybe you know go to an event or two and introduce yourself. Everybody's super friendly and say hey you know. I'm thinking about trying this race and and you know just jump in and give it a try you know everybody has to do their first race sometime so um, you know might as might as well be you know while you're young and having fun and and you know just you know my best advice is to try try to reach out to other young paddlers and, and make friends and have paddle buddies and then see see where you want to take it from there yeah if she's uh, not into the racing yet that's totally fine um, th there's opportunities everywhere uh, I was always told you can't say you don't like it if you don't try it <laughs> but but uh, on the other hand with stand-up going in so many different directions it's it can you know it can be anything she wants it to be right now it can be a fun you know way to blow off steam it can be a competitive race scene it can be surfing it can be a fitness aspect it can be a social group so uh, I, th I think she's fortunate to be around in a time where it, it can be anything she wants it to be, and she literally just has to try it and see what that is. Great, thanks guys. And Judy, what's your daughter's name? My daughter's name is Hadley. Hadley, so shout out to Hadley from myself and Candace and Danny. Thanks for calling in, and I think we're gonna be sending a prize to Hadley, so she'll maybe get stoked on the send sport. Send her a race fan. Uh, by, yeah, <laughs> send her a race fan, and hopefully uh, she'll get going. Yeah. And Hadley, just uh, you know, to, to see the possibilities, you might want to tune into the Performance Paddling Junior Pro and Youth Sup Fiesta. We are going to have a live webcast um, at performancepaddling.com of our event on May 5th. So you can turn in, tune in live and watch all the young kids compete in racing and sup surfing and even in Junior Pro sup surfing all day long. Um, via the live HD webcast by Sub Connect, so um, I would encourage you to tune it in, check it out, and see all the fun that you can possibly have. So thanks so much again, Judy and Hadley, for tuning in, and everyone out there for tuning in. Remember, we'll be sending you your FCS prize, and we want to remind everyone out there that we'll, there will be another live webcast starting at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, so we'll get to do all this again. We'll answer some new questions and hopefully get a chance to learn some more about you guys and FCS products out there and what you guys like to use. So closing remarks from uh, Danny and Candice. Anything you want to say to your millions, probably billions of fans that are out there tuned in right now? <laughs> Uh, well, just, you know, thanks for tuning in and thanks for your support. And um, don't forget that, you know, FCS makes a product that's great for just about all your needs in stand-up paddling. So support your local retailers and FCS and keep an eye on, out for the new Candice Finn for 2014 by FCS. Uh, yeah, thank you guys. Uh, th this is a one-of-a-kind uh, first edition, the live chat, the live feed. And uh, 
It's a pleasure to be here. I had a lot of fun. Thank you, Anthony, Candice, and of course, Tyler, FCS. Really appreciate it, man. Th thank you for everything. <laughs> So thanks everyone again for tuning in to our first show. There will be a second show. For those of you that answered some questions, got some questions answered, getting your FCS prizes, and those of you that sent in questions, whether it was via Twitter or via some pre-submitted questions, we may answer your questions in the second installment of our show. So <laughs> if we didn't answer it now, it might get answered in the second installment. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, adios from the <laughs> booth here at SubConnect. <laughs> Feel the difference. Part of that process is working with some of the world's best